Okay, welcome to today's video. So this is the most requested one that I've had. And that's actually a walk round of my R53 project. So it's not a finished project, it's ongoing. It's plenty to tell you. So what I'll do is do, we'll do a walk round of each of the areas, whether it's under the bonnet, on the interior, wheels and suspension. And we'll just talk you through the, uh, the mods that I've got and any plans for the future for this car. So it's a car I've had for a number of years now. So I think in about around four years ago I brought it. One as a, I never expected to be such a, a big a project as it became. It was one that very much uh, the history behind it. So I had an R53 years ago, loved it, um, but sold on, moved on to an R56 and a, a club and things like that. I always fancied going back and doing a sort of no holds barred, no compromise build. Didn't have to worry about it being a daily car. It was a second car at the time when I purchased it. So started looking for an R53. Um, lots of different, red was the, the main colour I was going for, but this one came up, so it was completely stock, um, blue at the time, lots of chrome, really ugly, um, and the actual owner at the time had issues with the car that he couldn't fix in terms of the central locking not working, um, every time you put your foot down the traction control kicked in, so it was a bit of a, a, a mess and that was reflected in the price, I think I paid something like it's about £1,600 for it back then and that was about four years ago so that was a really cheap car at the time there's plenty now so anyone looking for an r53 they're a great little car to pick up as a project and work on really fun supercharged don't get many superchargers on cars anymore um, and a great little engine there so we'll talk through as we go around on that so i drove down to gloucester to go and take a look at the car and as soon as i saw it i made the guy the, the offer on the car and actually drove away with it there and then so it was a bit of a, a trek to get it back with obviously the traction control issues but managed to drive it back to Gloucester, back to Birmingham um, got it home, stuck it straight in the garage and started working on it and within a matter of hours I'd fixed most of the issues that the guy was having so for example the central locking not working was purely down to the fact that there are actually cables disconnected in this door that's all it was so they forgot to plug it in when someone had done some repair work or something like that so it was a really easy fix and a cheap project car for me to start with um, and the plans were simple fit an aero kit suspension wheels little little things like that however we decided to move house um, and we had to move a little bit earlier than expected so the car had to go into storage and we didn't have anywhere to keep it the so Mills's autos actually offered to store it for me um, for a short while just while we were sorting the house out and while there um, it was going to be stripped down and have the sort of the, the bumpers and aero side skirts at the time painted to match the car and um, yeah so they were to be painted and matched to the car okay so one point I did want to address and it's a question I get all the time is why an R53 why didn't I go for an R56 or an F56 at the time and it's purely down to the fact I've had some really bad experiences with the second generation Mini, so I had a, a JCW Clubman at one point that went through seven climbing chain tensioners in the space of a year on an N14 engine, so that really put me off the second generation Mini for a long time. The F56 again, it was a bit of a, an expensive car to have as a second car at the time, um, so that's where the R53 came in. Engines, so it's Chrysler uh, block, really strong engine, takes uh, a decent amount of power upgrades. Um, there is a limit so it's not as easy to get power out of them as say the R56 but there's just something about the supercharged engines here the wine that you get from it and um, we'll stick a, stick a clip in in terms of the supercharger wine on this, this just so addictive that I just had to go for a first gen Mini and this is actually one of the last ones so it's a 2006 facelift car um, it's got 90,000 miles on the clock so it's, it's done a few miles but as we walk through the car you get to understand a lot of those bits on the car that perish have actually been replaced on this so while it was at Mills's Autos and while it was apart we literally went back to the metal pretty much on this car uh, the only thing that <laughs> didn't come out was the uh, engine itself it's had all new brake lines, all new bushings, everything replaced on the car, so everything's nice and fresh and should go for another 100,000 miles. 
However, when the body shop took a look at the car, there was actually that much sort of damage to the, the panels with previous poor repairs and things like that that the previous owners had done. They recommended that the whole car need respraying. So at that point, I thought, why not? Let's just find out how much it would cost to actually change the colour. So you probably noticed by now, this isn't a standard mini colour. So this is actually Porsche RS Green. So it's off the, the, the GT3 uh, 911. And it's, I think the paint code's 2D8. And it was a colour I'd always looked at and th thought would be a really interesting one for the Mini. Um, so I did lots of photoshops as I do and settled on this colour. And it was only a few extra uh, £100 I think it was at the time to actually change the entire colour of the car. So I'll put a link in the description down to below to the body shop that actually painted it. They did an amazing job and they've painted uh, my Clubman as well. So the red Clubman that's been featured on the channel, they actually painted that. And also the BRZ that we've got on the channel now. That will also be painted by the same body shop and again we're going to go for a full colour change on the BRZ so, so that's a coming soon project there and a, a little bit of a, a teaser there that we're actually going to be painting the entire car once we've got the body kit and everything ready for it. So as the car sat at Millsies I helped out as much as I could with the shipping down process before it went off to paint and then when it came back to paint I spent a lot of that summer actually working with Millsy, rebuilding the car, doing some of the modifications that we're going to walk around in a minute. Um, and it got to the point where it sits today pretty much. There's a few extra bits I've done since in the last year or so and again we'll talk through those as we walk around the car. So let's stop talking about the, the history of it. Let's get right into the detail now of what's going on, the mods on the car. Okay, so when it comes to the uh, so when it comes to the engine bay on the R53, it's probably the most stuck part of the car, but that doesn't mean we have left it alone, it's not completely stuck. Um, so the first thing that stands out is this front mount intercooler. So it's actually the AirTech front mount intercooler supplied by Orange Performance. You can see there we've gone for the yellow hose, pro hoses on those, and that really stands out. So what's the point of that? So at the moment, um, when you buy one stock, it comes with a top mount intercooler. They suffer, because it sits above the engine, they suffer from heat heat soak so what we've tried to do just to uh, help bring those inlet temperatures down is actually mount the intercooler further down behind the front bumper and what that allows us to do is cool the air now there's lots of controversy about these in terms of because of the extra pipe work you get a drop of boost and you do but because you're cooling that air down you get to keep what power you do have for longer now that fitting that isn't a nice and simple uh, five minute job like the the top mounts which are a few bolts and you can fit one in and out there is a lot of cutting to do behind the bumper the crash bar underneath the bonnet etc so it's not a if you're looking for just a quick fix it's 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 not it's it was one of the most challenging mods i've actually done to this car but for me it was worth it it was something i've always wanted to do and gave it a go and did it and got it fitted they're really pleased with that then you can see the intake that we've got over here so it looks stock it's actually an orange performance stealth intake so what it's basically got in there is a, a cone filter rather than the normal paper filters and that actually takes a cold air feed from this cowling area here as well and we've matched that up with a yellow pro hose as well so the silicon hose is always when i'm replacing some of the sort of warm parts especially hoses try and go for those silicon pipes not only does it add a splash of colour in the engine bay I'm not afraid to say it, I do like to do things not just for performance performance is great as well um, but I also like the visuals and so I'm not going to lie I like the fact that we've got the bright yellow hoses within the engine bay and it complements the accent colours that you'll see on the car later on so in terms of the brakes and some of the bits on the interior so what else is going on in the engine bay so you can see these braces over here so these are actually off the uh, the mini cabrio so the convertible and actually you fitted by mini to add stiffness because obviously when you chop the roof off the car and um, the car goes wobbly so they add a lot of strut braces like that to add just strength to it so your r53 if it's a facelift car actually already has the holes to fit these braces and um, so we actually painted those up the same color as the exterior of the car just to add a bit of accent color under the engine bay and fitted those across the top you've got a big girder of a strut brace so this is actually gtt and now they do lots of great products and I think this is probably one of the best that they do in terms of their strut braces for the first gen mini. So that for me was a, a must have in terms of again, 
the whole package of stiffening up the car and making sure that we reduce the, the sort of the body roll and the twisting of the chassis as you go around corners fast. Behind that, we've actually got a pro alloy um, expansion tank as well. So mine was sort of a done 90,000 miles. It was looking a bit crusty and they have the potential to split. So I thought while the car was apart, I actually painted, um, so I think it was a, like a, a polished aluminium to start with. And actually uh, sanded that down and painted it with black wrinkle paint just to give a nice, nice clean look to that. We've got the carbon mini badge up the top there, just some, some little extra. We've got the TSW uh, top engine mount on the left hand side, so that's a solid, solid rubber uh, mount as opposed to the oil filled one that you get on stock again. Upgrading all those parts that may have worn down over those sort of 90,000 miles. So while we were in there we replaced that as well. The engine itself, so remains pretty much stock in terms of power output. Other than the fact we've gone for a, a cabs reduced pulley, so 17% reduced pulley. So what that allows is basically the supercharger to spin faster and the faster it spins because of the reduced size pulley, uh, the more boost it creates. So that ups the power. So engine wise, we've got a Miltec exhaust, um, sort of cat back exhaust on the car as well. So it's probably making around 200 brake horsepower or so, which isn't super numbers. And I mean, you can get these up to um, around 260, 270 with a remap, bigger valve head, etc. And that's a, the uh, direction we'll be going on this car at some point. It's just finding the time before the project's going to sort of work on the engine on this one. Um, but we will get there eventually. I'm always going to stick supercharger. brought the car because it had a supercharger, so I'm not interested in going for a turbo conversion. There's lots out there. Uh, that have done it. I mean, Justin's making some great power on his at the moment that Mills's autos have built for him. Um, but for me, I just want to stick to supercharge. I've got a turbo car, so I've got the F56. We never know what might happen with the BRZ. That may get a turbo or supercharger as well. So this is my supercharged car, and that's the way it's staying. So that's pretty much it for under the bonnet. So you can see we went for a black engine base. So the engine didn't come out when we resprayed the car. So what I did was carefully um, taped up the engine bay and actually sprayed it satin black so it's a nice clean look in here without having to pull the engine to get the green in here obviously they've repainted under the bonnet so it was a full respray literally every bit of trim came off the car when it was painted so the, there's pretty much no blue left on the car which was great and they did a really good job of it okay so let's start off with the uh, wheel and tyre combination so we have Oz Racing wheels on here so they're actually the Oz Legendas, they're 17 by 7 ET37 and they just about clear our yellow speed brakes that we'll come on into a second. So the wheels themselves are wrapped in Toyo tyres for the T1Rs, so they came with the wheels so what I'm doing is waiting for those to uh, wear down and then we'll replace them with something a bit more grippy. But as they're already on the wheels, um, we've got a wheel and tyre package through Orange Performance, we decided to leave them on for now. Um, and just wear through them and just get a good use out of them before we move on to something a bit more track orientated. So you can see as well we've got the orange performance uh, stud conversion on here as well with tuner nuts to uh, hold the wheels on just makes them easier when you're taking them on and off the car rather than having to th feed the wheel bolts through and try and line and hold the wheel up you can actually slide it straight onto the studs and do the tuner bolts up so that makes it really easy when you're changing your wheels and tyres often and um, to actually take the wheels on and off the car. Okay, so then you can see the gigantic brakes uh, behind the wheels. They're actually yellow speed brakes and I couldn't order them in any other color than yellow. If you, yellow's in the title, you've got to have the yellow version. Uh, so they're a, a gloss yellow, really bright and vibrant and stand out behind that wheel. So they're, they're six pot uh, brake calipers with 330 mil discs that are vented and grooved um, to help with cooling those brake discs down. I really recommend those both again through Orange and you'll probably notice um, throughout the video a lot of the performance parts on here are from Orange so the company I have great history with. I'm sure we'll do a video on Orange performance at some point go into the history of it um, but Ollie always looks after me in terms of, of parts and always does great deals through their website or Facebook. Okay to, so to support that brake setup as well we actually have stainless steel uh, brake lines on, all around on the car so we upgraded those um, while we were doing all the work as well 
so that you don't get that expansion of the rubbers if you stamp on those brakes really hard. On the rear as well, we've got the R56 setup. Uh, and when we go to the back, I'll explain that as well as some of the suspension parts behind. So what else have we got? So suspension wise, we actually have KW Club Sport suspension. So I was considering lots of different ones, whether it's VCs, etc. When a set of uh, club sports came up on the used market, um, so I decided to go for those and actually refurb them. So strip them down, um, and I'll put a picture on the on the video now in terms of what they actually look like off the car because you can't really see any of it here. But they actually have now bright pink springs, bright pink um, top mounts, so they've got Club Sport top mounts as well. And the plan was, before the car was going green, it was going to be a blue car with pink highlights on it. The colour scheme had changed after I'd already had those powder coated parts done. So instead of stripping it all apart, you don't really see any of the pink anyway, and where you do, it's a nice little bright splash of colour. So not too fussed about having that, and you don't really see it unless you sort of look up and through. Okay, also, underneath the engine itself we actually have the OMP lower front strut brace um, again just help stiffen up that chassis so all of the strut braces together make a really stiff package for the car um, everyone asked did you notice a difference when you fitted one brace or the other I think to be honest they all complement each other and add to the overall package okay so at the front we have hard race roll center adjusters and what that allows is when you lower the car it, it allows you to maintain the sort of the the geometry of the car and straighten things back up again. Okay, so while we're at the back of the car, let's talk about some of the uh, the additional suspension mods we've got to the car. At the rear, we have the Super Pro anti-roll bar as well. So that actually comes with a special coating on it that reflects the stone chip. So it's a bit like a rubberized coating and just allows it to ref uh, reflect any of those stones, um, which stops it rusting prematurely. Okay, so at the back end as well, we also have the R56 rear trailing arms. So why have we fitted those? So simply because they're alloy um, or aluminium, so they're a lot light, lighter than the cast parts that come on the R53 as standard. So that's a nice easy swap over and what it allows us to do is fit the R56 rear brake colours. We can see that we've painted them in yellow just to match or complement the front brakes as well. So same wheel setup at the back, exactly the same size as the square setup around the car. As mentioned, while the car was apart, we replaced again all of the uh, bushings at the back of the car. We also replaced the brake lines. So again, we've got stainless steel uh, braided brake lines to the rear calipers as well. Okay, so let's cover off the front end of the car now. There's lots going on here in terms of modifications. First of all, the obvious one, the aero front bumper. So a standard mini item, and um, this originally came with a Cooper S bumper. So it's what's fitted to the JCW, also known as the aero kit. We had to have one of those. We've also colour coded the front grille, so something a bit different, not everyone does that. So just masked those off and painted those up in the same colour as the car. Either side, you can actually see here, we have the orange performance brake ducts that are made specifically for the aero bumper. And what they do is actually feed cold air to the back of the brakes to cool them down. So that helps again on roads and on track. What a lot of people do is actually just fit that front section. We've gone the whole hog and brought the rears as well, which is the actual ducting to feed that air. Up here on top, you can see the Leap Bonnet Scoop. Great product for the R53, again, brought through Orange Performance. And it actually is a functional scoop and feeds cold air. If you've got a top mount, it feeds cold air onto the top mount. So great, again, for those inlet temperatures. With my setup, it actually feeds cold air just into the engine bay itself just to keep that cool, as cool as possible. Headlights, we obviously couldn't leave these alone. So factory, these come with chrome innards. What we've done is the Joey mod, which is actually where you remove the lens of the light and paint the inside. So we've actually painted those gloss black to match all the gloss black uh, highlights on the car, such as the roof, the wing mirrors, etc. Up here on the uh, cowling, we actually have the Orchiari uh, vent. And that feeds cold air into that uh, under, bon uh, under windscreen area, so where our air box was taking a feed from it, out the back of it. We actually get cold air ran into there as well using those. So these aren't fake grills. Everything on here are real grills that actually feed cold air to whether it's cool the engine or to feed the inlets as well. 
Okay, so just moving over to the exterior of the car, so down the side itself. So first of all, we've removed the uh, the side vents here on the, the A panels. We've got uh, smoked indicator repeaters. We have this custom yellow S logo, and these have actually been painted by myself. There's actually a video on the channel, and a lot of the jobs that I did on this car modifications are actually covered. So please check out my playlist for our 53 mods that I'll link down below. You can see here as well, we fitted aero side skirts to the car. And have a little vented section at the back here. Again, that's something, it's a standard mini part that you can buy from Mini and just adds to the look of the car over the standard Cooper S1. The only other telltale sign that we've done of modifications here is the door handles themselves. So they look standard, but when you look a bit closer, there's no keyhole. So what we've done is actually fitted a passenger side cover to the driver's side handle. So it removes that keyhole. Now this cover does slide off. So if, for example, the battery was to die, we locked out the car, we could still unlock it with the key. So this handle does actually just pull off. Okay, so let's talk about the rear end of the car. So you can see the most obvious one we've got is the GP wing. So it's actually a G wing from Orange Performance. So it looks like the GP wing, but a hell of a lot cheaper. A product I helped design back in the early days of Orange. Really proud to be able to run that on my car. Next, we've got the uh, rear wiper delete, the little Memorial Rich Phillips uh, sticker over the top of that. You can see we've removed the chrome around the belt line, so that's all around the car. We've actually painted that up and just removed all that chrome. Not a big fan of chrome and shiny bits on the car. We've color coded the boot handle as well, it's just a nice little extra. We've actually Joey modded the rear lights, so similar to how we did the front. We've sliced the lenses off on these and actually taken away the chrome from the inside of these just to again just de chrome some of that car. What else isn't standard? You'll probably notice here these are actually GP trims on the side that go down the back of the bumper. They just extenuate that, uh, that rear lip. And the biggest modification really here is down right at the bottom. So we've got the GP inserts from again from Orange Performance on either side and they're just stuck into place. And then we have this, which is the Leap Tour rear diffuser. So again, lots of people raising challenges around this. Is it functional, is it not? To be honest, I fitted it because I like the look of it. No more than that. I'm not gonna lie and say, I think, oh, it's gonna add lots of downforce or anything like that. For me, that's all about the looks and fitting that. So you make your mind up if you wanna fit one or not. I like the looks of it, so it's there on my car. You can see here, down at the bottom, we've got the Miltec exhaust. So that's a cat-back exhaust. Adds great noise to the back of the car without being too over the top. We haven't run decat or anything like this, so we're keeping this completely road legal, this car. Okay, so let's go inside the boot. So you can see here, we've got a nice clean boot set up, so nothing complicated. We've got a, a GP rear foam trim in here, just covers up where the back seats would be and just gives us a bit of storage space. We've got a cargo net just for holding anything that you've got in the boot especially when the, you've got no back seats to stop if you slammed your brakes on. So anything we want to tie down, we just put under this net. We've got a rear uh, half cage from safety devices provided by Orange Performance, uh, painted in satin black. So didn't want to go too bright. We've already got the green dash, etc., at the front. So a nice black cage there. So the cage itself has actually had to be adjusted. So it's actually Mills's Autos that did the work on it just reduce the height slightly so because we've got the sunroof on the car so we've got a panoramic roof these cages aren't made to fit a car with a panoramic roof Mills's auto has worked his magic and actually managed to get the cage to fit so if anyone's looking to do that on their R53 here'd be my first port call and he's one of very few garages that I actually trust with this car so there's a link in the description down below if you're in the Midlands or if you, you're happy to travel to the Midlands I would fully recommend using Mills's autos mini specialist knows exactly what he's doing. He's trimmed around these as well, so I took the rear cushions out just so that the cage can go back in um, with these side panels rather than leaving it all bare in here. So I, I don't want it as a, a strict out track car or anything like that. I've never described this car as a track car. For me, it's just a fun weekend toy. So it's not built for pure performance. There's comforts in here, especially when you get inside with the Alcantara. 
detailing, etc. Not it's not built as a pure track car. It's built as a comfortable weekend fun car. Okay, so let's talk about the interior of the car. So we'll start with the door cards. So you can see we've retrimmed these in Alcantara. We've had all the circles uh, painted to match. Again, there's a video on my YouTube channel how to remove these panels for painting them as well. We've got the Renline door pulls. So this is very much another link to a Porsche, not only the colour, but actually Renline who do a lot of aftermarket parts for the, uh, the Porsche market. Actually make these for the Mini R53 and R56, supplied through Orange Performance again. And all this does is just allows you to open the door and gives it a, something a bit different there. You can see down below, we've got the Harman Kardon sound system. Never planned for this to be a daily driver, so I've not upgraded this, the sound system or anything in it. The HK that it comes with is more than adequate for what I need. So let's go on, further on into the interior and look at the dashboard now. Okay, so we're into the interior now of the R53. The first thing that stands out, removable steering wheel. So this is an OMP steering wheel with a BG quick release. So it allows us to remove that to make it easier for getting in and out with the bucket seats. So we've got Corbo Club Sport bucket seats in here. They keep us held in nice and tight. We've got Scroff uh, four point harnesses as well. So again, when this car does see a bit of fun action, you're held into those seats and there's no concerns that you're gonna roll and slide about. Okay, so down here, you can see we've got the JCW uh, carbon fiber gear knob and handbrake grip as well. Just nice little touches like that. So lots of people say, why don't I go for the CAE shifter? And um, that's not something that really appeals to me. I like how the sock shifter feels, so no concerns around changing any of that at the moment. You can see there's lots of Alcantara uh, stitch work in here. So we've got the black and yellow stitching down a lot of the, the gaiters, the trims down the door. So that was uh, a great friend of mine, RKD Design. So Rich Everett actually did those as a one-off for me. So it's not something he does very often, um, but he helped me out on, on this project by doing that. And you can see we've got a lot of custom work in terms of the dash itself. So the dash came out, was painted the same color as the exterior. We've got all the dial surrounds, vent surrounds, buttons, etc. All these were painted up um, in satin black. So to get rid of any of the silver and chrome trim on the inside of the car, we decided to go with just a nice simple satin black. The dials faces themselves. So I'll show you a close up in a second in terms of those in the top corner. But these are custom dials made specifically for this car. So there was a design I'd seen um, that I like the look of. Spoke to the manufacturer and actually got them to do some little tweaks to make it match the car, sort of the yellow uh, and the reds, etc. So great look, great little mod there. Easy to swap again, um, and something that adds a real impact and makes you know that you're not in a, a, a stock car. What else have we got? So the headliner you can't quite see in the video, but the headliner custom trimmed myself, as in all the pillars and everything, um, just with a, a, a black fabric. Um, wasn't a fan of the bright grey colour that you get from standard. You can see here, there's a little Hulk badge in it. I'm not a big fan of stickers on cars, so you'll see there's not really any stickers on this car at all, whether it's club membership, etc. because I'm just a, a more of a fan of the clean look. But this was something I fitted for the children specifically. So I've got two, two children, a little boy and a little girl, Sky and Oscar. When they first saw this car, when I drove it back from the body shop and after it had been rebuilt at Mills's Autos, they came out and saw the bright green colour. And they nicked it, nicknamed it Hulk Smash after the Incredible Hulk. So that was my little nod to them. So a little vent, vent clip there, um, just in to just show the that little little bit of history and the connection with the car that we've got. Okay, so down at the bottom of the dash here, you can't quite see it. Um, but there's a scan gauge fitted as well, so that helps me just monitor the inlet temperatures, etc., the water temperatures on the car. It's a nice thing to have when you use your new car for fast road use or track. Just keep an eye on those numbers, just make sure everything with the engine is uh, safe and on point. Okay, so hopefully you guys have found this video useful so and entertaining. It's one of the most requested videos we've had, so I thought I'd get it recorded today. While we're stuck in with the, obviously, what's going on um, at the moment in the country, it's a perfect opportunity to just walk you around the car. If you've got any future requests for videos, please drop them down below. 
if you found it entertaining please hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell for future updates on videos that are coming soon for not only this but we've got the project brz and the f56 as well so thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video bits and there's actually little holes on the bottom.